Hi guys. So we are going to read another chapter today um, in our book, uh, The Witches. And um, this chapter is going to be called How to Recognize a Witch. And the first thing that I want to talk a little bit about is um, in the last chapter, we learned a lot about our narrator's grandmother. And I want you to just think about um, if you did have or if you do have a grandmother um, and kind of get a picture in your head of what you know about grandmothers. Um, see if there are any connections that you can make to our narrator. Um, does your grandma or did your grandma have anything that's similar to that of how the narrator described his grandmother? Are there differences? Um, I know that this grandmother is Norwegian and things are a little bit different here. What kinds of connections can you make um, about what you know about grandmothers versus what the narrator said? Um, that's going to be um, something that I want you to keep in mind throughout the rest of this story because um, your view of a grandmother might be a little different from what we learn about the grandmother in this story. And as we get into this chapter, I want you to um, think about a couple of uh, interesting words. I want, I'm going to challenge you this time, actually. Um, as I read, there are going to be three words that um, are a little bit tricky, three important vocabulary words that it's important that you know what they mean. Um, you can go ahead and write those down ahead of time if you want. That way you know what you're listening for. Um, those three words are the words ghastly, G-H-A-S-T-L-Y ghastly. Um, the second one is reeling, R-E-E-L-I-N-G. And um, when you hear that, you're going to, you probably know the word reeling, like you cast a fishing line and you reel it back in. Um, this is going to be a little bit different. And then the last word is outraged. Um, that's probably the easiest one of the three words, something that you maybe have heard before. Um, but again, those words are ghastly, reeling, and outraged. I want you to think about those as I read the story today um, so that you can um, try to figure out what exactly those words mean. Use your context clues. Think about um, the context of the story around it to develop a meaning for those words, just like we would practice at school. <clears throat> as I read this story, I want you to listen carefully and think a lot about it. Um, you'll have three questions again at the end of the story. Um, I had one person turn the questions in, um, I think, from the last chapter. So, um, again, you'll get bonus points if you're in my home room and you answer those questions. Um, and you can always let me know if you have any questions about um, what part of the story you should re-listen to. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. How to Recognize a Witch the next evening, after my grandmother had given me my bath, she took me once again into the living room for another story. Tonight, the old woman said, I'm going to tell you how to recognize a witch when you see one. Can you always be sure? I asked. No, she said. You can't, and that's the trouble, but you can make a pretty good guess. She was dropping cigar ash all over her lap, and I hoped she wasn't going to catch on fire before she told me how to recognize a witch. In the first place, she said, a real witch is certain, al is certain always to be wearing gloves when you meet her. Surely not always, I said. What about in the summer when it's hot? Even in the summer, my grandmother said. She has to. Do you want to know why? Why, I said. Because she doesn't have fingernails. Instead of fingernails, she has thin, curvy claws like a cat. And she wears the gloves to hide them. Mind you, lots of very respectable women wear gloves, especially in the winter. So this doesn't help you very much. Mama used to wear gloves, I said. Not in the house, my grandmother said. Witches wear gloves even in the house. They only take them off when they go to bed. How do you know all of this, Grandmama? Don't interrupt, she said. Just take it all in. The second thing to remember is that a real witch is always bald. Bald, I said. Bald as a hard-boiled egg, my grandmother said. I was shocked. There was something inde indecent about a bald woman. Why are they bald, Grandmama? Don't ask me why, she snapped. But you can take it from me that not a single hair grows on that witch's head. How horrid! Disgusting, my grandmother said. If she's bald, she'll be easy to spot, I said. 
Not at all, my grandmother said. A real witch always wears a wig to hide her baldness. She wears a first-class wig, and it is almost impossible to tell a really first-class wig from ordinary hair unless you give it a pull to see if it comes off. Then that's what I'll have to do, I said. Don't be foolish, my grandmother said. You can't go around pulling at the hair of every lady you meet, even if she is wearing gloves. Just you try it and see what happens. So uh, that doesn't help much either, I said. None of these things is any good on its own, my grandmother said. It's only when you put them all together that they make, they begin to make a little bit of sense. Mind you, my grandmother went on, these wigs do cause a rather serious problem for witches. What problem, grandmama? They make the scalp itch most terribly, she said. You see, when an actress wears a wig, or if you or I wear a wig, we would be putting it on over our hair. But a witch has to put it on straight over her naked scalp. And the underneath of a wig is always very rough and scratchy. It sets up a frightful itch on the bald skin. It causes nasty sores on the head. Wig rash, the witches call it. And it doesn't half itch. What other things must I look for to recognize a witch? I asked. Look for those nose holes, the grandmother said. My grandmother said. Witches have slightly larger nose holes than ordinary people. The rim of each nose hole is pink and curvy, like the rim of a certain kind of seashell. Why do they have such big nose holes? I asked. For smelling with, my grandmother said. A real witch has the most amazing powers of smell. She can actually smell at a child who is standing on the other side of the street in the pitch black night. She couldn't smell me, I said. I've just had a bath. Oh, yes, she could, my grandmother said. The cleaner you happen to be, the more smelly you are to a witch. That can't be true, I said. An absolutely clean child gives off the most ghastly stench to a witch. My grandmother says, the dirty you are, the less you smell. But that doesn't make sense, Grandmama. Oh, yes, it does, my grandmother said. It isn't the dirt the witch is smelling. It is you. The smell that drives a witch mad actually comes right out of your own skin. It comes oozing out of your skin in waves. And these waves, stink waves, the witches call them, go floating through the air and hit the witch, smack in her nostrils. The scent, they send her reeling. Now, wait a minute, Grandmama. Don't interrupt, she said. The point is this. When you haven't washed for a week and your skin is all covered with dirt, then quite obviously the stink waves cannot come oozing out nearly so strong. I shall never have a bath again, I said. Just don't have one too often, my grandmother said. Once a month is quite enough for a sensible child. It was at moments like these when I loved my grandmother more than ever. Grandmama, I said, if it's a dark night, how can a witch smell the difference between a t child and a grown-up? Because grown-ups don't give out the stink waves, she said. Only children do. But I don't really give out stink waves, do I? I said. I'm not giving them out at this very moment, am I? Not to me, you aren't, my grandmother said. To me, you are smelling like raspberries and cream. But to a witch, you would be smelling absolutely disgusting. What would I be smelling of, I asked. Dogs droppings, my grandmother said. I reeled. I was stunned. Dogs droppings, I cried. I am not smelling of dogs droppings. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. What's more, my grandmother said, speaking with a touch of relish, to a witch you'd be smelling of fresh dog's droppings. That simply is not true, I cried. I know I am not smelling of dog droppings, stale or fresh. There is no point in arguing about it, my grandmother said. It's a fact of life. I was outraged. I simply couldn't bring myself to believe... So, if you see a woman holding her nose as she passes you in the street, she went on, that woman could easily be a witch. I decided to change the subject. 
tell me what else to look for in a witch, I asked. The eyes, my grandmother said. Look carefully at the eyes, because the eyes of a real witch are different from yours and mine. Look in the middle of each eye where there's normally that little black dot. If she is a witch, the black dot will keep changing color, and you will see fire, and you will see ice dancing right in the very center cut of the colored dot. It will send shivers running all through your skin. My grandma leaned back in her chair and sucked away content contentedly at her foul black cigar. I squatted up at the floor at the floor, staring up at her, fascinated. She was not smiling. She looked deadly serious. Are there other things? I asked her. Of course there are other things, my grandmother said. You don't seem to understand that witches are not actually women at all. They look like women, they talk like women, and they are able to act like women, but in actual fact, they are totally different animals. They are demons in human shape. That is why they have claws and bald heads and queer noses and peculiar eyes, all of which they have to conceal as best they can from the rest of the world. What else is different about them, Grandmama? The feet, she said. Witches never have toes. No toes, I cried. Then what do they have? They just have feet, my grandmother said. The feet have square ends with no toes on them at all. Does that make it difficult to walk? I asked. Not at all, my grandmother said. But it does give them a problem with their shoes. All ladies like to wear small, rather pointed shoes, but a witch whose feet are very wide and square at the ends have to wear awful job squeezing, has the most awful job squeezing her feet into those neat little pointed shoes. Why do, doesn't she wear wide, comfy shoes with square ends, I asked. She dare not, my grandmother said. Just as she hides her baldness with a wig, she must also hide her ugly witch's feet by squeezing them into pretty shoes. Isn't that terribly uncomfortable, I said. Extremely uncomfortable, my grandmother said. But she has to put up with it. If she's wearing ordinary shoes, it won't help me to recognize her, will it, Grandmama? I'm afraid it won't, my grandmother said. You might possibly see her limping very slightly, but only if you're watching very closely. Are those the only differences then, Grandmama? There's one more, my grandmother said. Just one more. What is it, Grandmama? Their spit is blue. Blue? I cried. Not blue. Their spit can't be blue. Blue as a bilberry, she said. You don't mean it, Grandmama. Nobody can have blue spit. Witches can, she said. Is it like ink? I asked. Exactly, she said. They even use it to write with. They use those old-fashioned pens that have nibs, and they simply lick the nib. Can you notice the blue spit, Grandmama? If a witch was talking to me, would I be able to notice it? Only if you look real careful, my grandmother said. If you looked very carefully, you would probably see a slight bluish tinge on her teeth, but it doesn't show much. There she is, bald as can be with her pokey nails, licking the nib of her pen, getting ready to write a letter. It would if she spat, I said. Witches never spit, my grandmother said. They daren't. I couldn't believe my grandmother would be lying to me. She went to church every morning of the week and said grace before every meal. And somebody who did that would never tell lies. I was beginning to believe every word she spoke. So there you are, my grandmother said. That's all I can tell you. None of it is very helpful. You can still never be absolutely sure whether a woman is a witch or not just by looking at her. But if she is wearing the gloves, if she has those large nose holes... The queer eyes and the hair that looks as though it might be a wig. And if she has a bluish tinge on her teeth. If she has all of those things, 
then you run like mad. Grandmama, I said, when you were little, a little girl, did you ever meet a witch? Once, my grandmother said. Only once. What happened? I'm not going to tell you, she said. It would frighten you out of your skin and give you bad dreams. Please tell me, I begged. No, she said. Certain things are too horrible to talk about. Does it have something to do with your missing thumb? I asked. Suddenly, her old wrinkled lips shut tight as a pair of tongs and a hand that held the cigar, which had no thumb on it, began to quiver very lightly. I waited. She didn't look at me. She didn't speak. All of a sudden, she had shut herself off completely. The conversation was finished. Good night, Grandmama, I said, rising from the floor and kissing her on the cheek. She didn't move. I crept out of the room and went to my bedroom. That is the end of our chapter. I'm going to leave you with a little mystery there about how Grandmama is feeling. The next chapter is going to be called The Grand High Witch. And um, I want you to think because you're going to be asked in these questions to make a prediction. And even, even if you choose not to write these down, it's important that you do the thinking that these questions are asking because it's going to help you better understand the story. So the first question is, how does grandmother say you can recognize a witch? This question wants you to think back in the story and list the ways that grandmother tells our narrator how can you recognize a witch. There are lots of different ways, so make sure that you really dig back into that chapter. You can listen back, you can pause, um, repeat certain parts, write from what you know, and then check your answers there. Um, the second question, number two, is going to be, how often does grandmother say the narrator should take baths? In our story, the narrator says, I'm never going to take a bath again. And grandma has a response about how often the narrator should take a bath since he's a child and the witch can smell the child if they take too many baths. And then number three is a prediction. What do you predict will happen next? And on this question, it's so very important that you say what you think will happen and use evidence of why you think that's going to happen, what in this chapter led you to believe that. Um, in this chapter, we learned about how a witch is different from an ordinary lady. Um, so you should have that mental picture kind of going on in your head there. Um, and other than that, our next chapter will get started on shortly. And I hope you're enjoying our story. Thanks, guys.